Man. Man. Oh. I'm torn with this chapter, really, like a lot of others. I'm torn. So without further ado, let's crack down to Fairy Tale Chapter 500. Fire and Ice. Hit the intro! Double up. Wow, wow. Okay, so this chapter pretty much opens up f first up with a color page and Bran just dropping that and Bran just saying that she's going to turn a blind eye on these three Dimerias overhearing this and saying that she trusted Brandish and everything so we can see in the foreseeable future that that uh, Brandish is going to be fighting Dimeria at some point, a person that can control time so I'm curious how that's going to be a kind of battle and how that's going to turn out and be affected in that way and then continuing on, so after these negotiations soon, how she, she kept on saying, Brad just kept on saying, you don't know the true power, the true tale of the Spring 12. And that's where it hit me. Three of them's been taken out already. They've been brought back via Nineheart. So pretty much, if Nineheart gets taken out now, then it gets taken out, and we'll get to see that later on. But anyway, that's, a, that's three of the Springings down again, and gone, and out. So... You go from 12 to 9 members, to 9 members of the Spring 12. What would leave pretty much August, Brandish, Aline, Irene, and, all, and, the, and, the other not, and the other Dragon Hill. Still curious of who that could be, but, anyway, but that's pretty much it, it with those negotiations and everything. And the first quarter of this chapter while well, I thought okay that talks were great and all that I did enjoy the first bit of this it's the second bit after the middle act of this chapter that is is the Enville Enville and versus Grey fight that was phenomenal I love this bit where we got Grey just pummeling Enville and Enville has to pull out all the stops and also pulling out this armor that once you full on pull it to it Nobody will survive it because you get frozen instantly. Grady just pretty much destroys the armor and and can say, I can pummel you to to no end. But that would not bring Juvia back and 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 whatnot. And that really much brings a lot of questions to to why he didn't finish him off. Because if he finishes Invel off, he can stop Fairy Heart being extracted. Mavis is control his control over Mavis couldn't be broken and as soon as that happens no oh, Miro confirm if Invel's down for the count please I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry because I want Mavis to be really free and then once Zeref understands that Invel's being defeated that means they, they're they screwed because she's going to use their heart on those and, every, and stuff like that and then and and then it goes into the second the third act because there is a mini fourth act but that's more of a revelation of Grey learning who E&D is. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a while. But more about Branch, where Nineheart just suddenly shows up going, Where's Lady Urza? Where's Lady Urza? Where's Lady Urza? I've been given the powers of this most, these most awesome powers, powerful enough to be anyone. I've been given these to fight Lady Urza. Where is Lady Urza? blah de blah That is Nineheart. He then hears that Brand Brandish says, step aside, I'm trying to negotiate with these people. Negotiate? Are you telling me you betray Lady Irene? And pretty much if you apparently betray Lady Irene, you, you apparently are a traitor to everybody in Alvaraz, according to Nineheart. So, so he decides to attack Brandish and then, and everything, and then that's who goes, and Brandish goes, you can't do anything, he's too powerful. I don't know the meaning of this world. I don't care what the second option is that I just said. I don't know the meaning of that. I would know how to go forward and keep on going forward until we bash through. That's how we get, do things around here. That's how fairy tale works. And, everything. and he just smacks Nineheart down for the count right in the get-go, even with his whole powerful enchanted power from given to him by Lady Irene. So we got giving that. Oh, right. So, it, the fourth act, that I'm calling the fourth act, is the revelation that Invel tells Grey that, that Natsu is E&D. And we also find out that Julia didn't stay dead for one chapter. She's brought back thanks to Sherlia's prognosticated power and the healing abilities from Wendy. 
So, Juga's going to be playing a key part now in the fight between Natsu and Grey. That is definitely being foreshadowed now because Grey thinks Juga is dead and everything. And Juga must stop Grey now because this is definitely going to show to hopefully stop the fight of Grey versus Natsu ever happening. They might start, but as soon as Juga shows, would that stop Grey from actually fighting Natsu? Because yet again, Grey is one of those cards that could believe anything an enemy has told him. Even if, even if they tell him the truth, he shouldn't really believe that Natsu is the end day because why should he trust him? Because as soon as he notices that Grey is, um, Juvia is alive, he shouldn't really be fighting Natsu because Juvia is alive. There's no reason for him to fight Natsu now because of pretty much the person he cares about is still alive, thanks to Wendy. So that's all building up. So overall, this chapter is mixed for me. I love the Grey stuff. I like the first part of the chapter with um, Brandish and all that. I'm mixed on the whole nine heart getting down in one punch, and I'm looking forward to the Brandish versus Dimeria fight because she overheard everything that Brandish was saying. Because she got mistreated by Fairy Tail, Brandish was actually given, was treated like a like a girl mate in Fairy Tail until Mess fucked everything up. Hashtag fuck Mess. Get that trending on Twitter. Hashtag fuck Mess. It's going to be a thing I'm going to make. T trend it on Twitter. Hashtag fuck Mest. And he's a fictional character. But yeah, this was a really mixed bag for me for Fairy Tail and and I I literally liked certain elements. I didn't like the whole Juvia stuff that she just came back to this one chapter. It's like a lot of people say say fairy tale characters don't really stay dead. They will come back either in two chapters, three chapters, tops, and that's pretty much it. So I really did enjoy this chapter, but it at the same time it wasn't really a great chapter overall. It's mixed for for their 500 chapter. I was look really looking forward to a whole chapter just being a full on fight between Grey and Inveil with none of that because some of this stuff in this chapter could have been left for the next chapter, could have been left for 501, and we could have had a big chapter just spreading off of, of a big fight of Grey versus Inveil, and that could have lasted the whole chapter. But no, we've got some of this Nine Heart stuff, we've got some of this Grey stuff, we've got those little fights that were happening between with Minerva and, and Rogue versus Bradman and, and Mary Jane versus Jacob. Jacob could change his eyes because it, of it, him, his weakness is that way, so he has to show his eyes. And we got all that. So that's pretty much it, all the little end bits, all the chapters that I did. And I just showed you, told you the key parts of what happened in this chapter, and that's really the key elements I wanted to tell you. And that's pretty much it for the chapter. Did I enjoy it? I'm mixed on it. I like the Grey and Inveil fight. I wish it could have been the whole fight, 500th chapter with the ending still being him getting told that END is, is Natsu and, and ended there and we could have left it with another chapter where it could open up with Wendy getting healed or, or with the Branches stuff and so you got the whole Branches stuff, stuff as one chapter with the, with the, with the Juvia stuff happening at the end because he had all the grey stuff happening in this one channel. That's how I wish that Hero did it, but that wasn't the case here. I did enjoy this chapter, so like always, comment down below what you liked and didn't like about this review, this chapter of Fairy Tale 500, A Fire and Ice, down in the comment sections below. I've been your host, Kai from Kaiser Tiger Corner, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye for now. See ya. I'm also a member of the Double O Club. Bye bye for now. See ya. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed this review of Fairy Tale chapter 500. Like always, you can hit that subscribe button if you want to keep up to date with all my videos and, and everything. So you can hit that subscribe button when you can. If you've got that Facebook, if you've got Facebook or Twitter, there'll be two Facebook pages that I'm admin of. My own very own fan page is Facebook and, and another one called Avatar and Fandoms will always be with us for the rest of our lives. You can find the links for both of those down in the video description. If you've got Twitter, you can follow me on Twitter. Same deal again. Link would be down in the video description. And got that Anime Amino app. You can search Kaiser Take a Corner there. And I don't go on it much, but you can find me there as much as you possibly want. And also, yes, and there will cards might still be happening. I don't know, but I'll probably be editing this outro card as well, where where you can, where if I do add cards, I will still say press the I, but I'll be animating all the new content now on here, so you get new animations happening. So, 
So that's it. I've been your host, Kai from Kaiser Take Corner, member of the Double O Club, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye for now. See ya.